Welcome back to another Eye Care for Your Brain with board certified neuropsychologist, Dr. Karen Sullivan. This is another bite-sized brain health bite where I try to contain myself to 10 minutes. Let's see if I can do it. The kidney brain axis is our topic today. Kidney health and brain health have had an underappreciated relationship until about 2015. How are they connected and what are my top five recommendations for starting to protect your kidney health today in order to secure your brain health tomorrow? Like so many things that impact brain health, what we need to focus on here are vascular connections and metabolic connections. So let's start with vascular, which relates to blood flow. The main blood vessel and artery that support each kidney are relatively large, but the concern is how they branch off. They branch off into much teeny tiny smaller little blood vessels about the diameter of a piece of hair and supply a very important subparticle. There are about 1 million teeny tiny units called glomerus within each kidney. And these make up nephrons. Nephrons are what actually filter, microscopic little filters, that actually are what clear waste products from the kidneys. So they're very, very vulnerable to breaking off related to blood pressure or inflammation when things aren't going well. As blood passes through the nephron, what we see is that this is how urine is created and we separate what the body wants to keep and what the body does not want to keep. And when this system does not work, what we see is metabolic disturbance, a building up of chemicals in the brain that should not be there, should not be at these high levels, and we see mental status change, including all the way up to the most severe cognitive impairment of dementia. The kidney brain axis only became a thing in 2017 when neuroimaging studies showed a dose-dependent relationship, so as one increased, so did the other, between kidney damage and structural changes in the brain. The most impacted area of the brain is something called the PARS operacularis. What a interesting name, huh? This is in the frontal lobe of the brain, and it is essential to two different things, language and tool use. The brain has been shaped by years and years and years of evolution, and what we actually see is it's more shaped for using tools than it is for language. So the tool part of this part of the brain is actually larger and older. So my question I would have if I were you is, so what are the consequences of poor kidney health on brain health? So we track kids and adults who have chronic kidney disease to answer this question. And kidney disease runs from a range of one to five. So one, of course, being the most mild and five, the most severe when you would actually need dialysis. And what we see is throughout the spectrum of kidney disease that there is a risk for cognitive impairment that gets worse as you go further into the disease. And it affects executive functions. These are cognitive abilities that are subserved by the frontal lobe. So our most human abilities, our metacognition, our ability to organize, our ability to plan, our ability to multitask. And we see that not only is there a change in function, so what the brain can do, but like I said, we actually see atrophy in parts of the brain that gets worse as the kidneys are functioning less and less. So both of these groups, young and old with kidney issues, are much higher risk for delirium as well. So this is a syndrome of mental status change that can come on very, very quickly. So even within an hour, that includes acute confusion, agitation, sleep-wake disturbance, and oftentimes delusions or visual hallucinations. So we tend to see this in people who are hospitalized people who've had long surgeries that require anesthesia, people who are withdrawing from medication, and people who have acute kidney injury. And it happens because of that metabolic disturbance where toxins are accumulating in the blood and then go on to affect the brain function. About 60% of people who have an acute kidney injury will develop delirium. And the concern from a neuropsychologist's point of view is how will that delirium change over time. Will someone ever get back to their baseline? It's very, very individual. So what is it that we can do about it? These are my top five science-based recommendations to support brain health through your kidneys. The first one is to be aware of your kidney health. Knowledge truly is power when it comes to brain health. So when you get your physical done every year or your labs, 
they are doing a basic panel and they should always be including two measures of kidney function. The first one is called your bun. This is your blood urea nitrogen. And this is measuring nitrogen, which is made up from protein breakdown in your blood. The other one is your estimated GFR or your EGFR. This is calculating your filtration rate based on your protein levels, age, gender, body size, and race. So it's one base number and then we have to interpret it within the context of yourself to figure out what's normal and what's abnormal. My experience of reading medical records every day for my patients is that you are very often not told when you're in stage one or stage two, or sometimes, believe it or not, even stage three of kidney disease. Nine in 10 adults have chronic kidney disease and have never been told this is a problem. Once you're over the age of 60, you're more likely to develop kidney disease than you are to not develop it. And more than 50% of people over the age of 75 have advanced kidney disease. So track these labs and if you see them creeping up, make it a point of self-advocacy to bring it up to your primary care provider. Number two, the most powerful thing you can do when you know you have a problem with kidneys is to manage your blood pressure. And the recommendations are to keep it 140 over 90 or below. Like I've said in earlier podcasts and lectures to please use a good quality water filter if you're drinking tap water and make sure you change it regularly. I think you should reduce your use of over-the-counter medications that contain aluminum byproducts. So this would be antacids for the relief of heartburn and indigestion, peptic ulcer pain. Try to go after those things with nutrition more than taking something to mask the symptom. And number five, there is something called the renal diet. This is a kidney health-based diet where they prioritize things like berries, red peppers, cabbage, fish, cauliflower, garlic, onions, apples, and olive oil. So remember that brain health is whole person health, and the more you know, the better you're gonna do. So thank you so much for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe, and continue watching us here for more science-based brain health so you can be your best advocate. Bye. Mm -hmm.